Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Just wanted to say right at the start here that as of filming this video, I have over 100 subscribers. Yes. This is so great. I never expected to uh, anyone to really watch my videos and I'm so grateful for all of the supportive comments, the feedback, uh, just, you know, any, anybody who's shared with their friends, anyone who's liked and subscribed based on those old videos, I really appreciate it. I can't wait to share so much more with you. So as a bit of a celebration, I thought I might do a sketchbook tour. As you can see, I have a few sketchbooks here. I've only been sketchbooking since 2021, so it's just over a year and a bit now. And I think that the, so I have these ones, uh, larger sketchbooks, which I call my like, you know, at home everyday sketchbooks, small sketchbook, which I used out and about. You can see that one took longer to fill. I try and number them and date them. And then on top of my sketchbooks, I also have these like folio things where I keep more uh, finished pieces on loose paper. And also these little tiny notebooks, which I tend to use for like, I don't know, colour experiments, swatching. I don't know if I, uh, anyone would be interested in a tour of something like this as well. I could do a couple in a video or use it to explain my favourite colours or how I come up with my colour palettes or something. I don't, I, let me know if you'd be interested in that because I could totally share. However, today I think I'm going to share with you not my first sketchbook, but my second sketchbook. So this was a sketchbook that I bought when I went back to the UK for the first time for my graduation in October 2021. Uh, and I got this from a store in the UK called Paper Chase, but it's really like a, I guess you'd call it a knockoff moleskin. <laughs> it has a similar uh, feeling to the, to the moleskin and there's also a similar size. It's like, so, these Stillman and Burn ones are like A4. It's like a little bit narrower than an, than an A4. Oops, sorry, just knocked the camera. Just stabilize that. Um, but yeah, so it's just a little bit narrower than that. It's hard bound, got an elastic. I picked this up because I thought it was nice and I think I really enjoyed using it though. Like I said, this was a while ago. If there's any personal information here, I'm gonna have to blur it or cut it out. So if there's any little cuts, then that might be it. Let me just check the dates that this was, uh, that, that I used this for. Okay, so this was from November 2021 to the end of February 2022, which sounds about right, doesn't it? Given that I got it in October. And I have no idea what's in here. I don't remember. I have a terrible memory. I don't know what materials I used. I don't know what I was drawing. So really, this is just as much of a mystery to me as it is to you. So let's go on a a little exploration together of what I was drawing at the end of 2021. <laughs> so the first page has like my information on it, so I'll leave that out. I'm gonna try and keep this in the in the frame for you. Thankfully that's easy to check. So as you can see on these pages, I started out this uh, got over the new sketchbook fear by doing some sort of folk art sketches. I think I copied these from Pinterest. But yeah, so this was probably done using polychromos colored pencil and then this is just graphite. But you, I think I was trying to develop designs for my Christmas cards for that year. And anyone who works with me will have seen some of these little critters. I did them in Posca pen. Another thing worth mentioning is that I choose a color palette for my sketchbook every month. So you'll notice um, that there's a consistency in the color schemes that I'm using every month and then it you can tell when I drew something based on the colors that I used which is quite cool I can do a video on that if you'd be interested let me know in the comments here's some like unfinished sketches that I did I think I did this in like a razorable color pencil and then I started painting over it in gouache I think this was jetty gouache but I think I lost patience for it and never finished and here we have some swatches of a set of the Koenor uh, multicolored pencils. I really like these for sketching, especially like the ones with a dramatic color difference like this blue and red. But I think I got these and I was so excited to try them out. So I just swatched them all out in here and I think they look so nice. They are so fun to sketch with. 
So here was some planning for a, a drawing challenge that I never completed. I think many people have been in that boat before. So this was for Folk, Folk Tale Week 2021, because he edited this on the 14th of November. I never really went anywhere with this, but you know, it all contributes to the sketching habit, huh? And then here was some character studies. I think I was copying from Pinterest. I really love this guy. Let me see if I can lift him up. So this was by Taylor. Oh, I'm not sure I can pronounce that name, but there it is on the screen. A couple of Rebecca Green's uh, characters. She has such a distinct, distinctive style. Who's just playing around with different ways to draw people. I'm not really much of a, a character designer or drawer, but I figured that I would see how other people do it and then maybe develop a taste. I think this was just an illustration I found on Pinterest and then copied because I liked the simplicity. Uh, this was some Celtic uh, knotwork <laughs> designs that I was doing. I wanted to make my mum um, a piece uh, with like one of these Celtic dogs because she has a dog which looks, she has a, yeah, like a whippet dog that looks not dissimilar to this. And I was trying to remember how Celtic knotwork goes. Um, and also messing around. This was my November colour palette with the indigo and the light blue and the orange and the olive green. So this was like a, a planning out session for that. Some bad doodles. Some crane bird studies. I think I did this in bed, you know? And I think I was using the some black graphite rather than like regular graphite. It was either the matte graphite, I can't remember if I owned those yet, or the um, Staedtler Lumograph Mars Black, but I really like these. I like the, the expressive shading and the line work. More, uh, <laughs> more, more bad drawings. So this was trying to figure out foxes and deer, I think, for these, the same, uh, the same project. So this was, I, I got a new pencil. I noted that, the dark indigo polychroma, so presumably for the November colour palette. And some of these are really bad. Like, <laughs> Like, what is going on here? <laughs> this is just like a dog with antlers, but I, I think some of them are cute. You can see I made some little notes on here about how I felt like it <laughs> how I felt like it was going. Like, this was really cute. But this was like with no reference or anything. I was just drawing out the shapes to see if I could um, make it work. Sorry about the fly. Anyone else have a fungus gnat problem? Uh, okay, so on this page we have more swatches. I got some two millimeter leads for a mechanical pencil. Uh, fountain pen. I love fountain pens. Might be something I get into later. And then testing out all my blues that I had at the time just to see what uh, what worked for me. And then whenever I go to the art store to buy new art supplies, sometimes I take a little swatch card to swatch things on, like pencils or pens or whatever, with sometimes with like some of the colors I have already on there so I don't get anything too similar. So I guess I was keeping these because these were like my experiments for my November palette. And these were like little drawings from Pinterest. Look at this little guy. He's so cute. I have no idea if that's what the picture looked like, but he's so cute. <laughs> but yeah, again, these were just like trying to learn how to draw people from Pinterest. I would, maybe one day I'll get into it more. Um, I think this was, yeah, I was, I was, uh, I was sick in November and I think that I was just coming out of being sick. Uh, and so I found this, this was just a spare card with my October colors on it that I stuck in here. And I think I was watching, uh, on my TV, like a YouTube video about how to draw lettering. And I was copying this, uh, like following the exercises. And then I drew some iguanas. These are nice. I like them. Nothing special, but I, I think that they're fun. And then when the month changed from November to December, I switched over my color palette for my sketchbook and I made these pages sort of using all of the different supplies that I'd used in November and the supplies I would use in December with all the new colors. I absolutely love this, uh, being able to see the progression of this, like the going from this earthy greens and blues into the blues and reds I was using in December. And I chose these colours partially because Christmas and partially because I really liked uh, how these look in the folk art designs that I was using at the time. So this is a doodle that I did with fountain pen of some machine 
that doesn't have to make sense. You know, this is just done on my couch and I shaded in the background very meticulously. I do like this. And then this was uh, more drawing people. I don't know, I don't remember going through such a phase of drawing uh, people or wanting to draw people. I think you can see that I have a style even though I haven't practiced very much. This is probably how I would end up drawing people. Every time they come out the same, right? It's not like I'm developing a style, I'm just developing how I'd like to <laughs> change my style. I think this was a drawing I did that I had a plan to maybe give to my friend Emma. Uh, this is not what she looks like, by the way, but she does have two cats and she does like to wear beanies and be outside. So I think I was uh, drawing this based on that. And then this was like little types of houses. This is an example of one of the cards that I made from those folk art designs. I was doing for work another fountain pen doodle, some landscape sketches, which honestly are really inspiring now, make me want to do something with this. That I was thinking of maybe making that piece for my mum. And then this was that design and testing out the gold colours that I had to see which one would work best, which one was shiniest. Which, by the way, this Amsterdam acrylic marker, gold one, shiny, so shiny. So is the, this is the fine tech ink gold, I also like that. Sorry if the camera's wobbling. Oh, got stuck on my own sticker. Little hedgehogs. My friend works on the hedgehog signaling pathway and I was thinking about doing a little Christmas hedgehog. I don't think I've had, I don't know if I ever did, but I do like the little character with the scarf blowing in the wind. Kicking hedgehogs are so cute. And then this was just messing around with a spirograph. Who remembers spirographs? This was very fun. I do like geometric stuff, but I, I don't think this was really going anywhere. And more colour swatches. Like, this was a colour palette I put together for my friend, the one with the two cats. <laughs> and then this was my, like, a little record of my colour palettes over the months at the end of 2021. So, yeah, September to December. Um, This was following along to a little... Peter Draws uh, tutorial from YouTube, just like shading techniques and how to use lines and to improve doodles and whatever. I don't do a lot of this doodling style, but I do like how it helps you learn how to use line in your drawings and how you like to create depth. Um, and then I got a new fountain pen again and a new ink that I was trying out. Uh, layouts for logo design. That's another thing I quite like. I like typography. You probably see a little bit more of that in this sketchbook. Oh yeah, this was a design for my tea box. Um, maybe I'll take a picture of it and insert it so you can see the final version. But this is what I was thinking about going for, testing out the lettering and stuff. And then these were designs I think I was copying from the Rider Weight tarot deck. I, um, because it's been like a long-term goal of mine to make my own deck of tarot cards that I illustrated, whether they are based on these ones or just like an, I guess an oracle card deck using my own ideas for cards. Um, but I think I was copying these from the uh, Rider Waite one and also the Le Normand uh, tarot deck, I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly. Just like little composition sketches and ideas. More of those in graphite here really like all of these. It's nice to go back and look at these. And then also, I think these were ideas for my own. Yeah, card concepts. So these are like ones which I hadn't seen. Um, and I was obviously using a different color because I got bored of the graphite and did transfer a little bit onto the other page, but you know, it's a sketchbook. But I do like, I like all of these. One day I will do this, but sometimes you have these long-term projects that brew in your brain for such a long time and they need so many times that you have to try and work on them and not be ready and try and work on them and not be ready until you're in the right place and then you just do it. <laughs> Boredom doodling, another one of these little cards that I was making, though I don't think I was so happy with this one, which is probably why I left it in there, this little bird. And another little square doodle that I did on a piece of paper. I don't know what's going on here. Testing out this ink again, um, just the colors. And then I, this was obviously at the end of December. I think I did this lettering and then just decided to fill in the background and then got bored because it looks so messy. Stuck a little piece of tracing paper in here to stop it transferring. 
And because this was me developing my January color palette here, sorry for the wobbly camera. So yeah, this was the swatch card that I took to the art store. As you can see, I had a vague idea of maybe including a green here, but I think that quickly got dismissed and so did the violets and we just went monochrome and red. And I remember loving this color palette, like absolutely loving just like the reds, scarlet, deep red, and then the the sort of warmish gray palette. Um, yeah, that was a that was a long term favorite for sure. So simple and so effective. I was just more doodling. I think these were like the beginnings of color palettes based on the double ended colored pencils I had. This was more swatched cards I found. Just random doodlings. I don't know what this guy is about, but he's here. Ideas for a spring color palette, but I don't, I struggle with greens like this so much. And also pinks. This never happened yet, but you know. It all goes into the future, right? So this was the 4th of January, 2022. Still working with my January colour palette. So I was doing these um, animals from old pottery, that says. Not that it's legible to anyone else but me. But I guess I was looking at Pinterest at old pottery designs and drawing how people used to represent animals from that time. But in using my modern materials, I suppose, like the simplified lines and the way that this peacock tail has the tail made up of these like star shapes. Uh, I really like. Let me just double check I'm focusing. Um, yeah, so I really like that. And then these were old Moroccan tiles, it says. Sometimes I leave these little notes in so I remember what I was copying. But yeah, Moroccan tile designs. Tile designs generally have been in my sketchbooks and also in my head still. They're still on my list of things to draw. I really like these uh, graphical designs. And this is just in felt tip. Apparently I got some gel pens. <laughs> I was, uh, yeah, copying from uh, Pamela Coleman-Smith, who was the lady who illustrated the original uh, Rider Waite tarot deck that everyone knows so much. She was a, a lady, I believe, that she came from a Jamaican heritage and was living in the UK. I'm, I'm hoping I was right on that, but she was a really interesting person. I did some research on her because I absolutely love her style, but <laughs> this cat is so funny to me. And then there was some more, I guess because I was drawing from Pamela Coleman Smith and being inspired by her, I was drawing some more concepts for tarot cards. My problem is trying to come up with a style that I actually want to maintain. So I was thinking about just doing grayscale. This is using just gray gel pens and gray markers and a little Inktober sketch from the year before I guess that I never put anywhere else. It's a bit late but I probably found it and just stuck it into full space. So I left this up. I believe I got these from Pinterest. This was just coloured pencil sort of uh, very simplistic designs. I didn't uh, really say lino cut studies okay. So somebody did these in lino cut and I copied the designs. I wouldn't claim this as my own, but uh, it was a useful study to do. And then <laughs> these were also faces that I found on Pinterest. I absolutely love these. I These are not mine, but I love the expressiveness and the simplicity and the abstract, silly nature of them, maybe a little bit dark. Um, but I love these. I think they would work so well as tattoo designs. And I've uh, since done a few of my own of these. I think that these were more of my... Uh, some of my own ideas as well as some of the ones maybe trying to adapt this to be a bit different to see how I'd like to play with these. More studies from Pinterest, runner ducks. Uh, I would guess I was going for a see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil kind of idea down here. Um, but that's kind of cute, just basic designs. So these were studies of uh, some, oops, sorry. These were studies of uh, some art, I guess you'd call it, that I found that somebody generated mathematically. Like somebody was using a, like a, a drawing machine or something to generate these drawings. And I absolutely love this style and the way that it drew the lines and the way that it connected the shapes. And so I was really playing around with this. And I think that I would love to do something, some more like this. I have other things I've done in a similar vein since more tarot card 
brainstorming over here, um, just basic figure layouts. I, I hate drawing people. This is so bad, Jules. Like, anyway, nobody's legs work like this, just FYI. I'm not good at foreshortening, but it's okay because I, I'm, that's not me putting myself down. I just haven't really practiced, so it's not really surprising, is it? A few more of this. I guess I was just like getting some ideas out of my head. More copying from Pinterest. Got a new felt tip pen, looks like. This is one of my favorites. So this is a, this is a standout day for me, 14th of January, when I found my, my uh, one of my favorite felt tip pens. And these fish, very simple, nice graphic designs. I copied from Pinterest as well, just in this felt tip pen. I find that like, when I copy stuff from Pinterest, it's not like I'm just copying it for the sake of copying it and copying it so that I will make something that's easy, that I don't have to think about, and then it gets added to my visual library, you know? It's not like I would ever reproduce it and claim it as my own, but it all adds to... When you copy things that you like to look at, you can add elements of that to your style. So some creepy eyes. And then this was some... <laughs> Some sort of font ideas, I guess, that I was thinking about for putting over some screen prints that I made, some monoprints. Um, I haven't done any monoprinting since then. I absolutely love it, but I haven't got around to it because it's so messy. But I was thinking, I'd made some like oranges and lemons, so I guess I was thinking about um, words that I would associate with with those. And then I was really loving the screen printing, so I was coming up with more ideas of things that I might screen print. And I think these look really fun in these simple colour schemes as well, with just the monochrome and the red. Like I say, I really love this colour scheme. Thinking about sunflowers and fish and fireworks. Love fireworks, really good. <laughs> I didn't finish colouring the, back of, the background of this, and the note says fireworks on black. You get the idea. Yes, Jules. Yes, I get the idea. So this was coming to the end of January now. Actually, this was only the middle of January, but I was already thinking about the colours that I was going to use for February. Uh, you can see I was keeping these sort of burgundy reds and thinking about moving into the um, sort of greens again, uh, going from red to purple, keeping the grey, moving into the muted greens. We'll see how that turns out. Little fruit studies. I don't think I was copying anything, I think I was just drawing fruit with felt tips and coloured pencil over the top. Uh, copying, these were from book plate uh, designs that I found, I think, probably on Pinterest. I absolutely love these book plates, I'd love to make myself one or make custom book plates one day or something. But these are really cute. Ah. <laughs> So these are copies of, I don't know if anybody has used the Gboard emoji mashup feature, like, um, but I don't know if it's just like a Google uh, thing, but if you download the Gboard keyboard on your um, phone, you can put in two emojis and it will like mash them up together. So you get like the strawberry tortoise, if you put the strawberry and the tortoise, strawberry goat, strawberry hedgehog. These are so cute. I mean, obviously not my original idea, but... I love the idea of uh, making silly things like this for myself. So this is a good starting point. This is coffee, I think. It's a fun emoji, isn't it? I think this was like the coffee bean plus plant or something. More swatches, just thinking about uh, primary palettes. I think this is, might be uh, inspired vaguely by Shan from Fairy Little Peach. She uses a lot of these colors because I was finding my way around pastel violet with red and blue, which is something I do like. And like these primary variations, swatching all my materials. And then <laughs> apparently I liked that so much I just kept going, did all my pinks, purples, greens, more ideas of triads because I find that like if you've got three colours, two or three colours, then you can really work with like a nice limited palette. Um, these were map elements that I copied from Pinterest, so I've, in the past, I've had quite a lot of fun making maps. Um, and when you make maps, you need, like, little icons to put for, like, different features. So these aren't mine, but I was, like, studying them so I could use them as reference 
from my own sketchbook rather than um, from the original source if I wanted to do any more map drawing. That's the other thing is that if you put things in your sketchbook that you copied from other people or other resources, then when you go back to it, you copy from your sketchbook, your copying will be different than, than it is in your sketchbook and therefore the final result will be even further removed from the original. So it helps you avoid plagiarism even more. Though I'm, I'm quite good at copying, <laughs> which is a blessing and a curse. This was layouts for uh, another piece that I did that I might put a picture in. It was like another typography piece. The, with a drawing. These were little uh, matte graphite sketches from MapCrunch, just uh, the impressions of compositions of landscapes. Uh, MapCrunch, is, if you didn't know, is a website which will drop you in random places on Google Maps. So you can see here I said in some of these where they were Lithuania, Thailand, Hungary. Very simple but a fun little thing to do if you don't know what to draw. Um, bottles. I guess there was maybe a prompt list that I found that had bottle or something and I was looking at the shapes of different bottles and how I could draw them in different ways. And then moving this over. Experiments with layering pencils and neo colours as well. This was just another idea for this was idea for my March color palette this is March color dev <laughs> for development February final call this was the final uh, idea for my February color palette and you can see here he's swatching out all the colors I did like a little fritillary drawing another little swatch card Swatching those colours also on black and uh, brown paper because I think I was like thinking that I might try and do more drawings on tone paper in February. We'll see how that one went. Uh, and then moving on to that, ideas for the March colour palette. Didn't really end up looking like this, but it's fun to see where the ideas came from. Um, drawing. I think I was copying some other people's Tiger illustrations for this. This was also not my original content, so these were like, this is a very Lee Ellickson inspired Tiger drawing. Some of these were like um, lino cuts or old illustrations, or this was a photo, I think, though. I like this guy. I don't know. I think this was from a photo as well, actually. That's quite fun, using all the different materials. I think my camera might not be focusing that well, so... This was for the year of the tiger 2022. Tigers are so cool. <laughs> uh, otter studies. Otters are hard. They are hard. It's because their ears don't really exist. Look at this guy though. He's so cute. He's having a great time. <laughs> this was the first drawing I did on this page. If you want to see the warm up effect, this versus this. Uh, I think says it all. Like, if you draw something and the first thing you draw is bad, just, just keep drawing, trust me. Trust me, it gets better. Um, I love these guys, they're so cute. And I was drawing them because there was like this astrology drawing challenge and otter is the, um, or one of the animals associated with the zodiac sign Aquarius. So here's the constellation for Aquarius and otter. And then this is also... I believe the planetary symbol for Uranus, which is also associated with uh, this, and I did like a final, I did a final piece related to this as well. Maybe I'll put a put a picture in. Maybe not. Oh my goodness! Just a whole, <laughs> just a whole page. I tend to do my color swatches on these uh, wide index cards. I stuck them in with this this leafy washi tape. But um, yeah, so I tend to do my, my colour swatches on these index cards because they're so white and also super cheap, super easy to carry around. Um, but I guess I was just thinking about ideas. And it's amazing how many of these actually came through. Like, I think I actually used all of these. Planned out like four months in advance. How organised is that? Now it's like the week before the next month and I'm like, oh crap, what colours am I going to use in my sketchbook? 
Neo Color 2 on black paper. Experimenting with tree shapes, love tree shapes. This is somebody's dog that I drew, having a great time. More uh, Pinterest copies, just these very like folk arty shapes. More of those. I think I was just trying to fill up the sketchbook at this point. Not that we're that close to the end, but yeah, this, is, this was the February color palette with the greys and the greens and the purple. I really do like this. Also these designs, really fun. Also from Pinterest. Uh, heart designs, I guess it was coming up on Valentine's Day. Um, and so I was doing some heart based illustrations. Probably not very original, just playing around. Some more of these faces, you know, based on the ones from before. Look at this clown face. Why do I love that? He's so silly. Absolutely so terrifying. And yet, I, I, I think a sticker of that would be really fun. I'm not really a sticker person, but you know. So these were some drawings I did after I went on a walk and I took some pictures and I came back and I drew like some of these barbed wire studies, I guess you'd call them. I don't know if that's really in focus, hopefully. This is a landscape I saw on my walk, some tree shapes, and then some more studies on tone paper. So maybe I did do a few things on tone paper and the way that these trees were like branching and, and, le and leaning and interweaving was so cool. So I wanted to do some studies of that. I also did another piece with uh, Neo Colors and I come back to this subject a lot. That was a really inspiring walk for me when the trees don't have any leaves on. Trying to draw butterflies. I can't draw butterflies. What can I say? I can't do symmetry. I get bored with all the fiddly detail. Maybe I'll have a, a good day one day. Testing some new watercolors on some cheap watercolor paper. I think this was one of the Schmincker super granulating ones or something. Hmm, can't remember. It's beautiful though. Ah, uh, some comet designs from Eli Spencer, apparently, who made these. Absolutely love the simplification of the shapes, super inspiring. <laughs> Medicine for bad vibes. I was doing pomegranate studies and I did them in so many different ways. I did like the line drawing, because so I found these on Unsplash, I think, or some royalty free image website. And I did the, uh, so this line drawing, a pencil sketch, a continuous line, uh, and then a negative space, which I really think this is quite cool, actually, just with the dark green pen. And then this is good vibes juice. I guess maybe I was having a case of the bad vibes and this helped, maybe. Pomegranates are really fun to draw, yeah. More, uh, I just obviously grabbed my favourite red felt tip pen and decided to go for it. I think I found some interesting ideas here. Hand with the eyes, taking the brain out of the head. I don't know. Maybe, yeah, maybe this says something about me. I hope not. Ideas for lighthouses. I think this was copying other people's lighthouse designs. Um, but it all feeds into my inspiration Cycle helps me remember and engage with it better. Love all of these though. These people, whoever drew these. Excellent job. Really good. Uh, more ideas. I guess these are like tattoo ideas more than anything else. Lighthouses from Pinterest. Tiny houses from the tiny house library. I don't know if this is a thing. Absolutely love that lettering though. Look at that. As I said, I have no idea what's in here, um, but yeah, we're looking at these little house shapes. Oh, mushrooms. So this was using my a reference book, actually. So this was using the Collins Fungi Guide, I think, that I have. And I think I was just picking random uh, mushrooms and drawing them. This so mushroom. And this was in gel pen and fine liner and brush pen. I think this was, yeah, really fun, actually. And I wrote like the little, uh, the scientific names next to it. 
I think I was doing these while my boyfriend was on the other side of the couch. It's, it's interesting how you remember stuff when you look back at your sketchbook. You remember where you were at the time. A blues roundup, I'm swatching all of my blue coloured pencils. Uh, this is a misty morning watercolour from Roman Schmoll. I absolutely adore this. Who wouldn't? Testing out different papers. Oh, this was probably for my birthday. Yeah, this was on my birthday, the 19th of February. I was drawing, uh, I was I was testing out the materials I got for my birthday and how they fit in with everything else. In the paper swatches. This was like birthday haul. This was a, a face my boyfriend drew on a piece of the tape that he wrapped the uh, stuff in. And also he got me some stuff from Choose and Keeping. And whenever you get stuff from Choose and Keeping, they send you these absolutely wonderful stickers and I had to keep one in my sketchbook. And this was really the start of my... Uh, the start of my watercolour obsession, by the way. M my birthday, 2022. And it kind of got out of hand from there, really. And then these were like abstracts, abstract based on plant shapes. This was like obviously a kiwi, maybe like a, a seaweed or garlic cloves. I love the garlic. Okra, maybe? Just let me know. And these were leaves, I think, like the underside of water lily leaves. Maybe some tree roots or bamboo or something. More testing out watercolours. These were the ones also from uh, Choose and Keeping. Just random swatches. Using up leftover paint made these nice textures. Swatch cards, ever present in my sketchbooks. Um, these were from acrylic wash swatches apparently. March was coming, made my uh, made my colour palette, and apparently I came up with names for this. Turquoise blue, true green, and sunshine. Could do with some of that right now. I do like it. I'm still not sure about this, this true green. Not really the vibe, but I appreciate that I used it this month. More drawings abstracted from reference, beans, leaves. This is garlic as well, I think. Uh, this was like an aerial shot of some tea plantation or something. An x-ray shell. And this is like a sea slug. I love these x-ray shells. I must have drawn this shell so many times. But this is just using one coloured pencil and I think it really is so effective to draw those. Um, like obviously in, in negative, because I think that the, yeah, usually the dark part is lighter than x-ray. Just some random sketches to finish up the to finish the last couple pages and then a little Ouija board goodbye. I think I was excited to start the new sketchbook at this point. By the time I get to the end of a sketchbook, usually I'm excited to move on. But yeah, so this is just me testing the materials when I first got it. And that's it. Well, hope you enjoyed coming with me on that journey. If you did like it, Please give this video a thumbs up, give it a like, share it with a friend who you think enjoys uh, sketchbook tours or who would like to see some uh, art content from me. I have some, uh, lots, so many other videos planned and yeah, thank you all so much again for subscribing. Thank you for staying until the end of the video. Please do like this video if you did like it and I will see you in the next video. Bye.